Aviation archaeologists Steve Vizard and Gareth Jones are about to undertake the most challenging aircraft dig they've ever attempted. Their goal is to recover and preserve pieces of the hurricane of Flying Officer John Cock. The reason the team's digger is on a barge is because the hurricane crashed into water, hence the need for a floating machine. To add to their headache, the water is tidal and at best only half a metre deep. The other problem is that it's in a World Heritage Site. We've got, what, an eight-ton machine on there? It's an eight-ton machine. They say the pontoon weighs about, about eight tons as well, so we're trying to float 16 tonnes on about half a metre of water. And we've probably got about 30 centimetres to play with, if we're lucky. That is it. With such little room for manoeuvre, the team need to use the incoming tide to have any chance of reaching the crash site. Well, looking at that, there's not a lot of draft there, is there, really? No, as I say, that's about half a metre, but the problem we've got here, we've actually picked it, as you can see, the inrush of the tide's going up. This is the last spring tide of the year, and if we get stuck up there, we could be there all winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's now or never, isn't it? So it's now or never. It'll take our floating digger several hours to reach the hurricane crash site, which lies six miles up the Fleet Lagoon behind the shingle bank of Chesil Beach. Most of us tend to think that the Spitfire actually won the Battle of Britain. But twice as many hurricanes took part, shooting down more German aircraft than Spitfires and ground defences combined. And the hurricane we're trying to recover has a particularly rich history. Our team have identified the crash site and start to find small pieces of aircraft. But the readings show that there are even bigger pieces buried deeper in the mud. As Gareth and the team continue their hunt, I'm meeting Steve on the shore to find out more about the site and the story behind the crash. How important is this aircraft in terms of those that are left to recover? How unique is it? Well, it's unique in as much as it's probably one of literally a handful, fingers of one hand, Battle of Britain sites that are still left in the UK. The Chesil Beach crash site is doubly important because of the history that goes with it. The RAF pilot, Flying Officer John Cock, was the first Australian ace of the war, having already shot down 10 German aircraft. Now, Steve, tell me a bit more about John Cock. He arrived uh, with the rest of 87 Squadron just really as, as the, the battle is sort of reaching its height. He sort of joined in the battle around about half past 10, quarter to 11, shot down a Messerschmitt and then was attacking a JU-88, but one of his guns had jammed and was attacked himself by another Messerschmitt. I was attacked from below by this apparently the same aircraft who came up from underneath and put a burst through the side of the cockpit as I was pulling away to the left. And uh, the engine started to run pretty rough and smoke and catch fire, so I decided there was no place to be. And... The instrument panel was shattered. The engine was obviously hit because it started coughing and spluttering. And uh, he turned the aeroplane upside down and pushed himself out by putting his foot in the control column. So he bailed out? Bailed out. Around here, over here? Well, just over there at Portland. But at least he got out, that's the main thing. The team are hoping for some big pieces of wreckage, as an eyewitness to the crash said that the hurricane hit the water from a shallow glide. Lying in the mud, is the team's most prized find so far, a compacted mass of over 200 bullets. Still see him in the links, in quite good condition. In a dogfight, the Hurricane had enough ammunition to fire for just 13 seconds. That August, Hermann Goering, the head of the German Air Force, was confident that the RAF was a spent force but the reality was very different. That month, the few shot down twice as many planes as they lost. Among those shooting down German aircraft in August was Willie Rhodes Morehouse from the Millionaire Squadron, who already had nine kills to his name. Willie was also flying hurricanes in the Battle of Britain, and we've unearthed film, shot from his actual plane during combat. This remarkable footage is what Willie saw as he fired his guns on German raiders attacking southern Britain. Mm. 
At our Battle of Britain Hurricane Dig in Dorset, the pontoon and excavator are now in position and the team are ready to go. The tide is also perfect. It's now or never. The underwater crash site has been marked out with four bamboo canes. It's just great to know that we are on top of it. I mean, some of the earlier finds that came out, I mean, at least we know we're in the right place. Yeah. What's going to be interesting is to, be, is to find out just how much of it actually survived. Right then, fire it up. Off we go. Let's go. I've seen a few digs in my time, but this is new for me. The excavated mud is placed on a specially built grid where the team will sift through it for pieces of the aircraft. Right, fellas, see what you can find. Do you want to push it through the grid, uh, Jeff? It's messy work, but we don't have long to wait. It's our first piece. And bigger bits aren't far behind. Ah, yeah. oh, 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 whoa, what? <laughs> What do you think that Wait, is? Get Gareth, have a look at this. Get it slowly. This is the first major piece of the hurricane that we've found. It's part of the plane's internal structure. You might say its skeleton, which connects the wings to the fuselage. This is quite an impressive piece of the airframe, actually. Is this aluminium? That's aluminium. Aluminium, yeah. It's an actual silver paint. Yeah. It was put on there. For me, this is really special. It's a genuine piece of a hurricane that fought in the Battle of Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So can you give me an idea, Gareth, where on the aeroplane this actually comes from? So this piece, where the actual pilot sits. Yeah. Underneath him, this is the main spar that would sit right underneath the pilot. So is it running along the aeroplane? Al along the wing. That would be along the wing line. OK. How much of an aircraft survives depends on the angle and speed it's travelling when it finally crashes. Even in low speed impacts, which might look catastrophic, much of a plane can survive. But what's becoming apparent on our dig is that the Hurricane did not survive the impact as well as the team had originally thought. There's actually more in this thing. There we are. Yeah, but it, it's, it's... What do you think that is? It's, it's a coolant pipe. Steve's worried because it's so badly bent. I think that it's possibly not quite such a shallow glide after all. You think it... I think it was probably... A, yeah, I don't think it was a 30 degree slide into the water. I think it was probably a bit more 45 because... It's not coming out in huge lumps, as you perhaps would expect, a sort of a fairly low-speed impact. Yeah. I mean, they're big bits, obviously, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, absolutely. But, um... Nothing much. No. Because the hurricane has broken up more than he expected, Steve is going to have to draw on all his 30 years' experience in aircraft recovery to make sense of the wreckage. What have we got here, Steve? That's a uh, rudder pedal. That's the rudder pedal? That's one of the rudder pedals. What's that? Can you access the strap that goes over your toe? Your gloves are cleaner than mine. If you clean that up, you'll find Palmer written underneath there. Palmer? Palmer. If you wipe it off the back of your gloves. Oh, yeah, there it is. Isn't it? Part number 51. Yeah. So that would sit over your boot? Yeah, that would sit over your boot. So yeah. the, the pedal is there, yeah. which has sort of got the... You clean it, you'll find yeah, the serrations ah, in the pedal. So that's, that's the, the, gr the thing the grip, that would grip, grip with your foot, like, yeah. 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 So, again, the last feet to sit in these were John Cox. Again, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, we're doing quite well, but, of course, as we know, time is against us. Should we ramp this up a bit? We do need to, actually, yeah. yeah. If he takes another... Another big scoop. ..quick bucket out of that same, okay. same place, but deeper. This is the trouble. This is the problem with underwater digging. Because we're not actually in the water, we can't really see it, we can't really see what's going on, we're relying on... Nigel, the digger operator, to try and feel his way. And they do have a kind of sixth sense for this digger operator, but again, even he, you know, for all his years of experience, is digging blind. What have we got there, guys? Oh, look at that. Deptford, London, England. Date of manufacture, March 1940. Well, just a few months before it ended up in here. Armoured glass from the front of the cockpit. Armoured glass? It's the armoured windscreen. That's it, actually, in the frame. You can actually see that's the edge edge of the glass. 
I wonder you know, if that was shattered by the impact or shattered during the, the action that shot him down. Yeah. We'll never know. Probably the impact when it hits, impact. It hits yeah. the water. The armoured glass from the windscreen of our Battle of Britain hurricane is followed closely by dials and controls from the pilot's cockpit area. Next up is one of the hurricane's heavy undercarriage legs, which bore the weight of the aircraft on takeoff and landing. Okay. And then suddenly a piece of the hurricane emerges, which for me really captures the fighting spirit of our pilots during the Battle of Britain like nothing else we've found. That's the pilot's control column. Yes, yeah. it is. This is what the pilot used to fly the plane, but also to fire his guns. Last person to hold that was John Cock almost 70 years ago. Wait, is, this, is that the, is that the, uh, the, the uh, gun button? The that, gun button. That'll be on fire. It's final proof that 70 years ago, John Cock did go down fighting. And so the, the pilot would have held it and that's like that. Fire and safe. Two aircraft shot down by that button. That button. Yep. By that button. That's amazing, isn't it? You see, this to me, this is when archaeology really comes to life. Because History comes to life here. We know, it? we know the, the events of that day, they're recorded. But this is a material record of those events because this was actually there. And this is what made it happen. What's been a real eye-opener is actually being able to see and touch and feel the controls that this man used while he was up there in the skies above me, battling not just to stay alive, but to defend Britain. A nation that was fighting not just for victory, but for survival, because that's what 1940 was all about. Our fighter pilots take off to destroy the enemy. The newsreels that summer were always upbeat, but in reality, by September, many RAF pilots had been flying continuously for several months, sometimes scrambling three or four times a day. Willie Rhodes Morehouse was one such pilot. Many of his fellow airmen had failed to return, and now the strain of combat was beginning to show. This film captures a brief snatch of leave in Cornwall, a chance to escape the war and spend time with his wife, Amelia. Just a few days later, on September the 3rd, 1940, Willie went to Buckingham Palace to be presented with the Distinguished Flying Cross. And, as always with this extraordinary family, someone was there to film the moment when Willie Amelia and his mother left with his gallantry award. But this is the really heartbreaking bit. Three days after he picked up his DFC, Willie Rhodes Morehouse was himself killed in action. And these are some, again, remarkable pictures of the crash site. I think this is quite moving. His body was extricated with great difficulty on Sunday, September the 15th, I think it says, nine and a half days after he was shot down. His father-in-law, Stephen, got this done and watched the whole proceedings. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. All our hearts go out to the fighter pilots whose brilliant actions we see with our own eyes day after day. Churchill immortalised them as the few. Just 3,000 RAF aircrew fought in the Battle of Britain, some, like John Cock, were lucky and survived the war. Dick Dimitriadi and Willie Rhodes Morehouse were two of the 544 pilots of Fighter Command who gave their lives that summer. The heroic few had paid a heavy price defending Britain. Now, though, it was the turn of the many. Our nation's civilians were about to bear the brunt of Hitler's murderous rage in the firestorms of the Blitz. Nothing delights her more than meddling in the love lives of others. Romola Garay is Jane Austen's Emma this Easter Saturday morning from 10 after the search for a German bomber shot down over Bristol. Dick 1940 continues next.